previously on Nikki delves into Africa. We went to Tanzania and man, what did we not see? If it's not the pilau, it will be the beef skewers. If it's not that, it will be the ngorogoro crater or um, Mount Kilimanjaro or I don't know, the monkeys. <laughs> It was so fun and I had so much fun having my friends on here. If you guys are watching this, I love you guys so, so much and thank you so much. It's an honor. And I would also love it if you guys could go to the comments and just thank them, well, for all of us and for providing such good content about Tanzania. If you have not watched it, please make sure you watch it. Top right corner, she's there for you as always. But now without further ado, we're going to go right into episode eight for episode eight we're going to a country that i'm suspecting some africans don't know we're going to cape verde now let's get to it <laughs> just look at that goodness Ooh. guys today we're going to be making kanja or kanja today i'm not really good at pronouncing that word it is a slow cooked soup made with rice and chicken and it's very similar to the asian congee but i guess without the chicken while we'll do that let me tell you a little bit about cape verde so cape verde or cabo verde is actually a collection or a group of 10 islands or an archipelago. It is located in the central Atlantic Ocean, 570 kilometers, well approximately, off the western coast of the African continent, near Senegal, Gambia, Mauritania, and part of the Macronesia ecoregion. That is like a collection of volcanic island groups off the coasts of Africa and Europe. As I said, it is made up of 10 volcanic islands and eight islets, that is mini islands. The main 10 islands are divided into two. The Barlavento or Windward Islands, which include Santo Antao, Sao Vicente, Santa Lucia, Sao Nicolau, Sal Boavista, and the Sotavento or the Leeward Islands, which are Mayo, Santiago, Fogo, and Brava. The largest island in size and population is Santiago and Cape Verde's capital, Praia, is located there. Their denonym is Cape Verdean and their total population, that is of the whole Cape Verde, is about 587,925, that is as at 2021. The official languages are Portuguese and Cape Verdean Creole or Portuguese Creole, which is basically like almost like a slang language, um, having a mix of Portuguese language and other African languages mixed together. Cape Verde was actually uninhabited until 1456 when two Portuguese explorers, Alves Cadamosto and Antonio To Uso de Mare, discovered it and settled there six years later. Now let's go to the flag. The flag is made up of two unequal bands of blue, two whites and a red band in the middle alongside 10 five-pointed stars all facing upwards. The blue part represents the ocean and the sky. The red and white bands represent the road toward the construction of the nation. The white for peace and the red for effort and the 10 stars represent the 10 main islands. It was adopted on the 22nd of September 1992. Their currency is called the Cape Verdean Escudo and 1 euro is equivalent to 110.45 CVE. For their religion, more than 93% of them are Christians, 1.8% are Islam and others are a small minority. They have one of Africa's highest standard of living because of their stable political and economic system. Also, they have one of the largest um, number of goats in their island. In fact, it's said that there is one goat for every two people on the island. Now that is crazy. <laughs> they also have an interesting mix of races and culture, you know, due to the um, Portuguese and African population. 
80 to 90 percent of their land consists of volcanic soil so um it is actually really really like hard to plant or you know grow stuff there so many of their food stuff is imported into Cape Verde. They eat a lot of fish and seafood. Of course, you know that one does not need to be imported. And other things like corn, beans, chicken, eggs, and stuff like that. Some of their dishes include kanja that we're making today, kachupa, buzio, morea, which is fried more eel, and pastel, which is a tuna filled pastry. Now for some places to check out in Cape Verde. First on the list would definitely, of course, be their beaches. I mean, their island. <laughs> Boa Vista, beaches, Sal, Praia, Santa Maria, Sao Vicente. Just have fun at their beaches, honestly. Next would be their mountains. As I said, they are volcanic islands, though many or majority of their um, volcanoes are dormant now. But some of their mountain slash volcanoes include the antonia mountain fogo mountain and sao vicente mountain slash volcanoes in Sal, there's an abandoned salt mine called the pedra de lume salt crater where you would see some pretty white and pink hued salt pans it is now sort of a wellness center where you can just float on the lake in the cell, there is also a bay carved into a rock called the Burakona or the Blue Eye. At first glance, it's a gorgeous blue body of water, but at a time around, specifically around 10.30 to maybe around 1, the light shines on the surface of the water and gives it an appearance of a blue, of a bright beautiful blue eye and that is a sight to see well of course that's where the name comes from the last one i'm going to be mentioning is in santiago and it's called cidad Velho. i hope i got that right it's a unesco world heritage site and includes the rua banana which is africa's first cobbled street that being said tell me down below where you'll be visiting first if you were to visit cape verde but for now, let's move on to the food. Whoa. Whoa. Like, I can literally imagine a mom making this for her child when the child is feeling like under the weather or something. It's such a comfort food. And it looks very similar. In fact, it's made very similarly to the um, Asian congee. There's also a rice, rice dish like this. Is there any Cape Verdean watching this? Please let me know if I did it well. But it looks really, really good. Like, it, it looks really good. I'm really impressed with myself. Okay. There we go. Let's try it out. Like you can taste that over an hour has gone into this. It's really good. <laughs> like I'm too stunned to speak. The chicken is delicious. The sauce itself, the stock I used was a really nice stock. So I'm happy I used that. Everything has become tender, extremely soft. And so you just, you know, like your tongue just melts everything in your mouth. What I taste very heavily is the stock. I taste the depth of the chicken broth and you know the chicken itself that has gone into making the broth. The chicken tastes really really nice, really tender. You can you can you know that you know that some of the flavors like kind of left a little bit because it has gone into the soup. But then because you are eating it all together it's rounded. I will give this I'll give this an 8.5. Again, I know you guys might say that I'm just giving these dishes high um, marks or maybe because it's African or maybe because I made it. Well, if I made it and I'm giving it that amount of mark, then I must be a really good cook. <laughs> JK, JK. But honestly, each and every one of them did not miss. If they missed, I would say it and would give it a low mark. But honestly, I've enjoyed making 
all these dishes and i hope you've enjoyed watching it as well well this is the end of the video let me know what you think episode 9 will be about <laughs> write it in the comments and please don't forget to like share and subscribe to this channel but for now i am nikki olori cooks this is nikki delves into africa god bless you and have a lovely day